Okay, we started with chapter four. We started with chapter three, finished chapter three in the last class. In chapters one, two, and three, if I have to quickly summarize what we learned in these chapters, it's all about giving you a set of techniques. And as the semester progresses, I'm going to add to these techniques. We saw the idea of passive sign convention. Okay, what happens when the current flow is along the direction of the voltage drop? positive current, okay, so on and so forth. If the current is opposite to the voltage drop, negative current, then we looked at KCL, okay? And then we looked at Kirchhoff's voltage law, okay? So applying KCL at a node, KVL around a loop, that's what we did. And then we looked at series and parallel simplification, voltage and current division in the last class. Then I gave you a simple, simple solution to solving multiple set of a set of linear equations to solve for to solve for circuits. Okay, and we are going to encounter more situations where this becomes useful, handy MATLAB code to solve system of linear equations. Beginning today, we are going to explore more concepts. Okay, specifically. I'm going to add to this list by looking at node voltage method. And then in the next class, we'll talk about mesh current method. Okay, node voltage and mesh current method. Okay. These are techniques that I'll add um, this week in, in chapter. And after that, we look at more techniques, um, source transformations, so on and so forth. Okay. Node voltage method is a technique when you're trying to solve, is a handy technique when you're trying to solve for different voltages and currents. Okay. You look at different nodes. Okay, you different. You look at different nodes in a circuit. Node is nothing but a point where more than one branches meet. Okay, if there's two, three branches meeting, okay, that meeting point, that intersection is called a node. Okay, if there's more than two branches meeting, if there are more than two branches meeting then you have a node, okay? Mesh is a closed loop, you know, a loop. Mesh is a closed loop with no other meshes in it, uh, loops in it, okay? So th this is what to expect in this chapter, node voltage method, mesh current method. Then we'll talk about source transformation, Thevenin's equivalent and Norton's equivalent, okay? So this is the idea of node, what is a node? A node is the point where more than two branches meet. Okay, let's see. We need to use some terms that have very, very specific meaning. It's a point where circuit elements join, that's a node. Node definition is used to write the current equations, okay? So when you look at node, you let up, you write up KCL at each node. Okay, you write KCL at each node and then solve. Once you set up KCL equations at all the different nodes, then you're ready to set up. Set up, uh, you have set up all the equations and you can solve. Okay, one of the other definitions that is very, very, very important is the definition of a reference node. Okay, reference node is just my definition. It's, it's a node that is assumed to be at the lowest potential. Okay, and the voltages of every other node are defined with respect to the reference node. Okay, and I'll not elaborate on that right now. For now, I'll just mention that it is used as a reference and all other nodes, the voltages at those all other nodes 
uh, with reference to this node. It's also called ground sometimes. And I'll show it to you in action. Okay. And then you know what a loop is. A loop is a path through the circuit that begins and ends at the same point, but mesh is a special kind of a loop that does not enclose any other loops. Okay, so when it comes to mesh, we look at different meshes and write KVL equations. Okay, earlier I mentioned that we set up KCL at nodes. So let me write it here. So when there are different nodes, at each node, you can write KCL equation. Okay over each mesh you can write kvl to set up equations okay we set up equations and solve them well how many equations do you need if there are 10 unknowns we need 10 equations if there are four unknowns we need four equations okay the number of equations needed equals to the number of unknowns. Okay. So typically what happens is the number of required equations is so large, so large, that um, we use some simulation tools rather than solving it on pen and paper, okay? So let's say node voltage method. I don't want to go through the theory. I would rather spend some time working on a problem. Okay, a problem like this. That way I, want, I can illustrate all the points that I want to illustrate using an example. It's easier to follow. Okay, so here is the problem. I have this circuit like this. Okay, let's first identify, and, and then the goal is to find, we want to know all the voltages and currents. Okay, so how would you go about solving this? Well, the first thing I'm going to do, let me see if I can do this. Here is the example problem, the exact same problem. I copied it over here, okay? It's the same circuit. Let me write out the steps in solving using node voltage method. How do you solve this or any other circuit using node voltage method? The first step is to define a ground node. The first step is to define a ground node or a reference node. Okay, so for my problem, I'm going to define this guy, the one at the bottom, as a ground node. Okay, that's the symbol for ground. Okay, I'm going to call this guy, which is the same as this guy. Both of these are exactly the same. I'm going to call that as ground, and that's my step one. Okay, that's my step one. Now step two, is to identify different nodes and define voltages, okay? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to call voltages and currents. 
Okay, here is what I'm going to do. Okay, I look at a node. Well, I look at my circuit and see what the different nodes are. That is a node. Remember, node is an intersection of more than one point. So I can call this node one. Okay, and there's another node here. There is node two. Is that it? I have two nodes. Okay, this is where more than uh, one, two circuit elements combine, join. Okay, good. Now, I don't have to do anything about this node because that's exactly the same as this node. Okay, so don't worry about it. So there are two nodes. The next step is to identify the node voltages. So with respect to ground, this is going to be voltage one. At node two, there's going to be a voltage two. Okay, node one, um, voltage one, node two, voltage two. That's the uh, first step. Define, identify nodes and define currents. Okay. So let me actually break this into three steps. Step number three is is to define currents, okay? Define the different currents, let me see. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to look at each node, N1, define currents at each node, okay? I'm going to look at each node, Let's begin by looking at node one, and then I'd write different currents, okay? I'll write, I'll set up the currents for this. Okay. All right, I'm going to call this current as I1. Okay, the current flowing in the um, resistance left. And I doesn't matter, the direction that I choose does not matter as long as I um, stick consistently with that direction. Okay, I'm going to use this color. I'm going to call, assume there is one current flowing, oops. I'm going to assume there is one current flowing in this direction. Okay, and I'm going to assume there is one current flowing in this direction three currents, okay? Similarly, when I look at node two, okay? When I look at node two, I'm going to write KCL in a manner that, uh, assuming that there are three currents going out, okay? Let's see how we can do that. Or um, let's start, let's leave it node one first, okay? At node one so that we define currents as well. Now, the next step is to write KCL at each node. Okay, the next step is to write KCL at each node. Okay, let's begin by doing that. Let's begin by writing KCL at, KCL at node, N1, okay? Look at KCL at node N1, okay? I have defined currents. These are my definitions. The direction of the current that I have chosen for I1, let me call this I2, and I'll call this I3. Does not matter. These directions that I have chosen, these directions do not matter as long as I am consistent with them and I will be eventually led to the right solution, okay? I'm going to write KCL at node N1. So when I write KCL at node N1, the sum of currents leaving I1 plus I2 plus I3, so that sum of currents should equal zero, right? So this is what I'm going to write KCL at node one as I1 plus I2 
plus I3 is equals to zero. Okay, so let's see if we can write these VI1, I2, and I3 in terms of the voltages that I defined, V1 and V2. So I1, if, if you look at I1, what is I1? Using Ohm's law, that's the voltage at node N1 minus the voltage at, on the left hand side. So it's a, in other words, the voltage on the right of that resistor minus the voltage on the right by the current, okay, by the resistance V equals to I times R. If you want to calculate I, you simply do V over R. So the voltage across this resistor over R. So I1, I'm going to write I1 as V1 minus 10 volts over the resistance of that guy, which is one ohm, okay? Plus, I'm going to write I2, okay? Which is the current going down, okay? Which is the current going down as the voltage at node N1, okay? Which is V1, okay? I define this to be V1, right? V1 minus zero, okay, V1 is the voltage at that end, minus zero is that voltage. So when I do that, V1 minus zero over five ohms, V1 minus zero over five ohms, will give me the current going south to, through the five ohm resistance. Then there is a, an eastbound current through the two ohm resistance. Well, that's simply going to be the voltage here minus the voltage there, so which is V1 minus V2, okay? V1 minus V2 over that resistance, two ohms equals zero. So that's KCL equation number one at node N1, okay? I could do the exact same thing at node N2. Okay, everybody with me, KCL at, so let me copy these, let me color code them using red. Okay, that way you see they are at equal at node N1. Okay. See what I'm going to do next, I'm going to do the KCL at node N2. So in other words, okay, let me clean this up a little bit. Okay, N2, which is this node over here. Okay, this node, I'm going to define the currents. This is my definition of currents, right? I'm going to assume, I am going to write KCL for all the currents leaving that node. Okay, let me call this I4, I'll call this I5, I'll call this I6. It does not matter. I'm just using names that are convenient to me. Okay, but the important point is I'm, I'm looking at all the currents that are leaving. Okay, I'm looking at all the currents that are leaving that node and write KCL at that node. Okay, that's all I care about, KCL at node N2, I color code this using this guy, okay? It tells me that I4 plus I5 plus I6, all the currents leaving should equal zero, okay? So I4 plus I5 plus I6 equals zero, okay? So what's the value of I4? Value of the current I4 is the voltage on the right, node N2, which is V2, minus the voltage on the left, which is the node V1, over two ohms, okay? That's, that's um, I4, okay? So let me see here. 
Let me see if I can copy that and paste it over here. Okay, V2 minus V1 over two ohms is the current flowing through I4. That's I4. Now let's look at the value for I5. Okay, what's I5? Let me go back to my circuit. I5 is the current going south. Okay, I5 is the current going south. So that's voltage here, which is V2, minus the voltage down there, which is zero, which is the ground, right? Over 10 ohms. So I5 is V2 minus zero over 10 ohms. Let me write that down. V2 minus zero over 10 ohms. Plus, now I need to write an expression for I6. Let's see what I6 is. Okay, I6. I6 is the exact opposite of two amperes. So that's negative two amperes. I6 is negative two amperes. Okay, let's see, let me write, plug that in. Negative two amperes equals to zero. Okay, so that's I6, and this is my equation number two. So I have two equations and two unknowns. V1 and V2 are my unknowns, and two equations to solve them. I should be able to solve them. Okay, let me do that again. Add a page here. Okay, I'm going to copy this. And this guy. Okay, two equations, two unknowns should be able to solve them. Okay, and I'll show you what I have when I solve them. Questions so far. This this is the general process. Okay, when you're you solving using node voltage method, the first step is to identify a ground node. Okay, then we identify the different nodes. What are the different nodes I have? Node one, node two, okay? Um, two nodes I have seen here, and we define the voltages, V1 and V2 for those nodes, okay? Once we do that, um, V1 and V2, the third step is to write KCL at each node, okay? And then it's a matter of, uh, applying case field properly and solving them. Questions, please. Questions so far. Okay, so let me look at this further. So I have two equations now, V1 minus 10 over one ohm plus V1 minus zero by five ohms. V1 minus V2 over two ohms, that's one equation. V2 minus V1 over two ohms plus V2 over 10 ohms minus two amperes, zero. That's the second equation. Now when I, when I manipulate this equation algebraically, I'm going to see 17 V1 minus five V2 equals to 100 volts. Okay, this is still a manifestation of equation one. Then comes negative five V1 plus six V2 equals to 20 volts. This is a, this is a morphed version of equation two. Now I can easily solve it using, um, the MATLAB method that I showed you. Okay, we'll do this guy. A is 17, negative five, negative five, six. Okay, then the set of equations, the set of uh, the matrix of unknowns is V1 and V2, okay? That's B. And I have the set of constants C to be 100 and 20. We can plug this equation B equals to 
inverse of a times c into MATLAB. Once we do that, we get a value for v1 to be 9.09 volts and v2 to be 10.909 volts. Okay. Make sense? Questions, please. I have a question, but it's actually not related to this problem. Okay. For the exam on Monday, do you think you'll have any problems that involve the delta to y or the y to delta transformations? No. No. Okay. Thanks. What, what, what they, did you see them in the homework? No, no, I, I didn't. I just, I, I just saw that they were there. So in the book. Yeah. If I didn't talk about them, they're probably not going to be in the, in the exam. Okay. Okay. Good. Other questions, please. Okay. All right, so this is the general process that we follow for um, solving KCL, using KCL. We we'll do one more problem. I have a tendency to use so many different colors and make it a bit less, it, it make it a bit um, confusing, okay? So the idea is we get two different values and this is exactly what uh, is shown in the um, example problem here as well. You set up the equations. This is one equation, that's the other equation. You solve them, you solve them. Once you solve them, you get some values for V1 and V2, okay? And then you can find the currents once you know the voltages. Once you know the voltages, you can find the currents. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we can solve one more problem. Okay, using KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, um, a node voltage method, applying KCL at each nodes. Okay, we'll do one more example. This time, I'm going to apply KVL, uh, apply the node voltage method on an index on a circuit that has dependent vol voltage sources. Okay, something like this. It's I copied this figure here, and I'm going to show you the solution here. Okay, so example problem. The problem is solve for all node voltages and currents using node voltage method, okay? The problem is to solve using the node voltage method, okay? Remember step one, the step one, the first step was to identify the ground. So I'm going to, uh, to define the ground, I'm going to define this node as ground, okay? Ground, meaning the voltage for that node is considered to be zero, okay? Meaning that it's considered to be at zero volts. Okay. Now, let's see, that's the first step. The next step is to identify the nodes, okay? So I'm going to call this one as a node because more than one circuit elements meet there. So that's node one. Here is another node. I'm going to call this as node N2. That's step two. What's step three? Step three is to write KCL at each of these nodes, okay? So I begin by setting up voltages. So this I'm going to call as V1. I'm going to call this guy as V1 and this guy as V2. I'm going to call that guy as V2, okay? Now see, um, 
let me begin step number three. Okay, let's we'll begin step number three by writing KCR. at node n1. So at this node, we want to look at all the currents going out, okay? There is one current leaving in that direction. There's another, another current leaving south. And there's of course this predefined current I delta, okay? There's another current I delta over here. Let me see if I can write the current equation. So this is going to be I1, I2, I3. I don't have to name them um, at all. I can simply look at this, uh, for example, what's the current leaving in this resistance, two ohm resistance, westbound, okay? So that's the voltage at this guy minus the voltage applied, which is 20 volts, okay? V1 minus 20 volts by two ohms. That's the value of the current leaving left using ohm's law. So that's, I, I can call it I1, and then write it as um, V1 minus 20 by two ohms. That's exactly what I'm going to do, V1 minus 20 volts over, two ohms, that's the current going left, okay? Westbound current through the two ohm resistance. Plus, let's write the equation for the current going south through the 20 ohm resistance. That will be V1, if this is V1, right? So this node, N1 is at V1, minus reference zero over 20 ohms. Plus, let's look at the eastbound current through the five ohm resistance. So that will be V1 minus V2 over five ohms. All of that equals zero, okay? All right, so that's KCL at node N1. Okay, let's see if we can write KCL at node N2. Okay, so KCL at node N2. N2. Okay, if you look at node N2 and try to write the KCL, Look at all the currents leaving. One, two, three. So I'm going to call them, I don't know, I4, I5. And notice that I3 and the current going east, I3, and the current going west shown in green are opposite. So this is simply I delta the negative value of this guy, okay? So it's like um, the current going from left to right is I delta. Therefore, the current going from right to left is negative I delta, okay? That's only simply, um, that's only going to simplify my equations, okay? So when I write KCL at node N1, it's going to give me Let's look, begin by looking at the current going left, which is V2 minus V1 over five ohms, plus the current going south at node N2, which is V2 minus zero over 10 ohms, plus the eastbound current, which is V2, minus eight I delta, okay? That's the voltage over here, eight I, I phi, I minus, okay? The voltage that is applied here is eight I phi, okay? V2 minus eight I phi over, okay? 
over two ohms. Okay, so that's the current going through that resistance, two ohms. So if I have, if I'm to annotate different colors, this branch is carrying a current of that guy. Okay, when I'm trying to write the current going in this branch, south branch, the voltage at the top of that node minus the voltage at the bottom of that node over 10 ohms, that's this guy. Similarly, if I do this, the current here, if I am to write the current equation here, oops, not that guy, it's this guy, okay? Then that's this branch over here. Okay, similarly, that's the exact branch on the top. Okay, then there is a current going south, which is this guy. That's the branch over here. And then there's a current going left, which I assumed to be this guy, which is shown using the branch over here. Okay, so by looking at the different um, branches, and the currents in those branches, I can write KCL at node N1 and KCL at node N2. Is that enough? No, you need the uh, constraint current equation. I need the constraint current equation. That is correct. Here's the reason why. The reason is what are the unknowns? I don't know V1. I don't know V2, and don't forget, I don't know I5 as well. So I need one equation to set up um, three equations, three unknowns, meaning I need three equations. So I delta is given to be this guy, okay? I, oops, I wanted to do that. Okay, I delta is the current going in the red branch, Okay, from left to right. So I can write it as a, the constraint equation I'm going to write is I delta Okay, the third equation I'm going to write is I phi is the voltage at the left minus the voltage on the right. So V1 minus V2 over five ohms. V1 minus V2 over five ohms. That's I delta. Now I have three equations and three currents, three equations and three unknowns. I should be able to solve them, okay? Questions, please. Okay, let's see if we can do, we have some time. So let me see if I can sneak in one more problem. This one, I, why don't I leave this problem for you to work on? node voltage method. I think I must have copied the problem somewhere. So please bear with me while I look for the problem that I want to assign as a work for you. Let's see. Maybe I did not copy it over here. Let me quickly do that. Okay, just give me one second. I'll have you work on a problem, this guy.
Okay, let's see if we can go back okay, and assign the problem. Just before mesh current will begin right here. Okay, I'm going to add a page over there. We clean this up. Very similar to the problem that we discussed so far. Okay. Solve. So you can ignore. Well, you, you can work on part B as well. But here, um, you can begin by use node voltage method to find the total power developed in this circuit. Or you can use node voltage method to arrive at all the different voltages. And then move on to talking about the total power delivered. Okay. So start by applying node voltage method and find the expressions for voltage one, voltage two, and the current one are different currents um, and different voltages. So solve. Okay. Solve using node voltage method. Solve using the node voltage method, apply the node voltage method. And what you will do is to, is to apply the node voltage method and see if you can find the different node voltages, all voltages and all currents. Once you do that, it's easy to find the total power developed. Look at the um, power developed in each of these sources, um, V times I, and the total power absorbed, okay? If the total power developed equals to the total power absorbed, then you know um, you have done the problem correctly. So part A and B, finding total power developed and the total power absorbed simply is finding all the voltages and all the currents through all the elements. Once you have that, you should be able to calculate V I, V times I power. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and get started with this and take about 10 minutes. Okay, ten about, take about 10 or 15, 10 minutes to um, start working on this problem. Okay, so did you have a question or did you want to begin um, the problem with us? Um, I can go through what I did so far. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I chose the top two uh, nodes. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, in one and two, I chose those. And then bottom nodes are ground. Um, the bottom nodes are ground, okay. Give me a second to catch up with you because I want to annotate all the bottom nodes as ground. That's step one. Step two is to choose the um, independent nodes. You chose the top nodes as um, N1 and N2. Then what? Yeah. Okay. So I used uh, KCL and got went from left to right. Uh, starting at the first node in one. KCL at node N1, right? Mm -hmm. And then you did left to right? Mm -hmm. So Like so? Um, no, like start, um, starting at N1, I would go to the left. Like that? Um, so like uh, I would go from N1, the current would go from N1 to the 25 ampere current source. Okay. Yeah. Which would give me negative 25. Negative 25. Okay. And then there was this current as well, right? From left to right, from N1 to N2. 
Yeah, and I'm sorry, but before this, I established that there was a voltage V1 at node one and a voltage V2 at node two. Thank you. Right, you're right. So this is V1. And this is V2. And then I also want to point out that this is exactly V1. See, there is no element between these two uh, devices. So they're essentially the same node N1, both of these. Okay. So there is 25, negative 25 amperes current going left. Okay, what else? Uh, so then I uh, went ahead and let the current go down uh, the, the branch to the right of that current, which would have given me V1 over 40. Okay, so there's one current V1 over 40 going south in the 40 ohm resistance, okay? Mm -hmm. And then uh, same with the next branch on the right, I got V1 over 160. Thank you. So if I can summarize, I'm, I'm, I know, I want you, to, thank you for doing that. And I want you to lead the discussion here because I cannot, you can say much better in a manner that your classmates can relate to. So there's one current going left, negative 25 amperes, okay? There's one current going south um, through the 40 ohm resistance. So that is V1 over 40 plus the other current going south in the 160 ohm resistance is V1 over 160, plus the current going left to right is V1 minus V2 over 10 ohms. Is that what you have? Yes. Okay, V1 minus V2 over 10. So that's KCL at node V1. What's the next step? Um, the next step would be to get the KCL at node two. At node N two, okay. So how did you set that up? Um, basically, I know that I need uh, V1 in at least one of these equations, and I just went ahead and, and did the same thing. I started at node two and I started at the left. So um, it would have been going, uh, it would have had the voltage V2 and then to go down to ground, I have to subtract V1 and then divide that by the resistance uh, 10. Yep. Okay, so that would be V2 minus V1 over 10 ohms, right? Yeah. Then the current going south would be V2 minus 0 over 20 ohms, correct? Plus, what did you do for this guy? The current uh, going. Oh, uh, the v, v2 minus uh, the, the voltage, uh, the, the dependent voltage. Correct, which is 84 times I delta. Yeah. Over 8 ohms. Okay, so I have three unknowns. Okay. V1, oops, V2, and I delta, okay? And only two equations so far. Um, I have a it question, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, why do you have a V2 minus V? V2 minus V, which place? V2 minus V, the middle term of the bottom equation. This guy? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a zero. zero. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Okay. My bad. Okay, that's V2 over 20. Okay. Now, how would you set up the equation for I delta? How would I set up the equation for I delta? First of all, what is I delta? I delta. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, uh, it, it's the current uh, going across the 160 ohm resistor. So it's the current going across the 160 ohm resistance in the southern direction, okay? Heading towards the south pole. Now, so I can write, by observation, I can write an expression for I delta. I delta 
So this is also called the constraint equation because it simply um, the third equation from the that relates the dependent source voltage source I delta the current going south is the current going in the 160 ohm resistance which is V1 minus zero over 160 ohms okay that's that's the idea of uh, the constraint equation okay so I have three equations and three unknowns I should be able to solve the three equations using three unknowns. So what I will do here is to simply give you um, the equations in the uh, in a form that is compatible with MATLAB, and then you can take it from there. So V1 times 21 plus V2 times negative 16 plus I delta times zero is 400. So that's first equation. V1 times negative four plus V2 times 11 plus I delta times negative 420. All of that equals to zero. That's the second equation. The third equation is V1 times one plus V2 times zero plus I delta times negative 160 equals to zero. So you have three equations, one, two, and three, and you should be able to solve for the three unknowns. You can solve them by hand or you can plug them into MATLAB, okay? Instead of having a, um, having a two by two equations, now what you have is your A is going to be three by three matrix, okay? A is going to be a three by three matrix, okay? Your B is going to be three variables, V1, V2, V3, three by one matrix. And then your um, coefficient matrix is going to be 400, zero, and zero, three by one matrix as well, okay? Questions, please. So when you do that, I'm afraid I have the, but that's that's how you would solve them. Once you have all the node voltages and all the node currents, you should be able to calculate the power dissipated, absorbed, or delivered through each device. Add them up carefully. You'll see that the power delivered in the circuit will exactly equal the power absorbed in the circuit. Questions? Um, professor? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I believe I got the same equation as you for the, the first equation on the top, but I got that it was equal to 4,000, not 400. 4,000. Yeah, if you multiply yeah, you're right. You know what? Yeah. You're right, my bad, it's actually 4,000. I'm not so good at copying from my earlier solutions. When I solved it, I had 4,000, and I copied it, I missed that zero, an order of magnitude error that could kill a human being. Sorry about that, my bad. Other questions, please? All right, so that's uh, the KCL. Let's see, let me go back to syllabus and uh, catch up on where we are. So today's class, today's the 15th. You're supposed to talk about node um, solving linear equations, nodal analysis. Today's the 15th, right? Node analysis with dependent um, sources, special cases. So it seems that we are one day ahead of schedule. So um, depending on what you want to do, we can take a break tomorrow and let you prepare for the exam, or I can come back tomorrow and solve more example problems on node equations, on, uh, on uh, node voltage method. So do you guys have a preference? 
um, to take a break and prepare for the exam. Okay, so that's what uh, it'll be then. We'll take a break tomorrow. I'll see you folks back on Tuesday then. Um, in the meantime, if you have questions, you're always welcome to send me an email um, before the exam. Um, expect around 24 hours of turnaround time, okay? But besides that, um, I should be able to respond to your question. 